Hello everyone, my name is Seth, and today I'm going to give you my review of the Super Mario Brothers movie. So the Super Mario Brothers movie is a pretty big deal. It came out earlier in the year. It made a billion dollars at the box office, which that's insane. Especially when you take a look at how the box office has kind of been doing this past year. It, it's been kind of hit or miss, really. But it did so incredibly well at the box office. It was a hit with pretty much everybody. And a lot of people went to go see it. A lot of people went to go see it multiple times. And it was relatively well received. More so by the audiences than the critics. But obviously enough to hit that billion dollar mark. And that's a big deal for Nintendo. They signed a deal with Illumination. They're planning on working on other films together with Illumination. And film is something that they've been kind of, I guess, nervous about getting into, especially after the Mario Brothers movie back in the 90s, which that was an absolute disaster, but... If you haven't seen it, I will say it's worth watching because it's amazing just to see how much of a disaster it is. But that's exactly why they were so afraid of getting back into movies. And I think this is a pretty good film to jump back into movie making. But before I go any farther, go ahead and like this video, hit subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video. So yeah, overall, I will say, long story short, I did like it there are some things that stood out more than others but overall i had a good time with it the first thing that stands out to me when i'm watching this film is that the attention to detail is all over this film especially in the animation the animation is really really good in this i love the character designs like this looks like Mario, it looks like Peach, it looks like Luigi, it looks like the Mushroom Kingdom, like, this is exactly what you would think, you know, basically you take the old Nintendo games, or even one of the newer ones, like Super Mario Odyssey, and just kind of scale that up, you know, up res it, and this is exactly what you would want. There were so many tiny little details that you could just see everywhere in this film. And just overall, the animation was really beautiful and well done. I mean, regardless of what you think about Illumination, some people don't like their style of movie. Some people love their style. And some people, it's hit or miss. Regardless of what you think about the actual quality of the movies that Illumination makes, there's no denying that they are really good at animation. It's just really smooth, really pretty to look at, really expressive, and it's just really well done. Like I said, they translated the world of Mario so incredibly well, and this is exactly kind of what I was looking for in terms of a Mario movie. And there's just about endless Easter eggs you can find in the backgrounds of all of these shots. I'm not a Easter egg breakdown person, like you probably won't see any of those videos from me, but I can gladly direct you to somewhere like New Rockstars. They do a great job. So if you want to know all of those Easter eggs, go check them out. I think one of the weakest things about this film is the story. There's really not much of one. The story's not really there. And before you say anything in the comments, I understand that the Mario games don't really have strong stories. Like I completely get that. But that is really one of my takeaways. One of the negatives, one of the big negatives of this film is that just the story really isn't there. And that makes a huge difference. So, of course, I know the Mario movies don't have that strong of a story. It's not The Last of Us or anything like that. But still, I would love to see them craft a really interesting and in-depth story with a really good character development as a part of the adaptation of the games. I mean, they did that a little bit for Sonic. Like, I think the two Sonic movies did a really good job of taking maybe something that could be really simple, but, you know, 
giving it a little bit more heart and fleshing the story out a little bit more. And I'm really hoping that they tackle a more in-depth story for a sequel, which, I mean, I haven't officially announced it, but, you know, of course there's going to be a sequel to this. And honestly, it wasn't quite as funny as I was expecting, as I was hoping for, really. I wouldn't say that the jokes fell flat. I wouldn't say there was a lot of jokes that just didn't work. I would just say kind of as a whole, it wasn't really as funny as I was expecting. And kind of talking about depth of story and things like that, there's really not any character development, not much at all. You know, Luigi has the most character development in this film, but you don't really get to see like a gradual development of his character you kind of see where he's at at the beginning of the film and he changes at the end of the film and i like the change it's cool it makes for a cool moment in the movie but we didn't actually get to see the character develop when i was thinking of how to describe this movie i was kind of thinking it's almost like a cotton candy movie now stick with me if you don't like cotton candy but for those of you who do like cotton candy, this will definitely hit home for you. Cotton candy is really pretty to look at. It's sweet. It's delicious. It's a good time while you're eating it. But if you're hoping that having cotton candy as a snack to kind of hold you over until dinner, or if you're wanting to just have a whole bunch of cotton candy to like replace the dinner, like, you know, sometimes you just snack a bunch, that's not going to do it either. There's no really nutritional value. There's no substance to the cotton candy. It's just good as you're eating it. And that's kind of how the movie is. You know, there's not a ton of substance. This isn't like a meat and mashed potatoes kind of movie. And that's okay, but that's probably the best way I can describe it is it's a cotton candy kind of movie. I also don't really know how I feel about Mario and Luigi being in the real world, being in Brooklyn, and then getting transported to the Mushroom Kingdom. That is a little bit too close to the 90s Mario movie. Maybe that's what they were going for. I, I will go ahead and say I don't know how to feel about that. As far as music, I will say they used a few pop songs through the movie. And I don't think any of them work, really. That's something that took me out of the movie. Like, the first time, I was like, okay. But then a couple of other times, and then, no, it completely took me out of the movie each time. And I think that was probably a poor decision. However, the score, on the other hand, is absolutely amazing. I'm going to be listening to this score for a little bit. It's done by Brian Tyler. He does such a good job he's such a good composer anyway and so the original pieces for this are really well done but i love how he throws in all of these mario themes that you know like even if it's just like a little light motif like you hear a bunch of themes that you know and he utilizes those along with some of the original score that he wrote for this and it's just so well done and even the original stuff he wrote fits right in with the Mario world. And Mario has some of the best music in all the video games. And I'm so, so glad they utilized it here. And it just worked really, really well. I loved that so much. I will say even listening back to the score, he used some of like the original Mario sound effects in the score, which is really cool. I think the performances were solid across the board. Nothing super stand out other than Jack Black. Jack Black was amazing. He was the MVP of this movie. It was just a really incredible performance. There's just something about Jack Black and animation that just goes so well together. And it was just so, so good. Like, I loved him as Bowser. He was perfect as Bowser. And I really hope they bring Bowser back and bring Jack Black back. I will watch Jack Black play Bowser as many times as he wants to. I can't overstate how much I enjoyed his performance as Bowser. I mean, he puts 100% into everything he does, and it shows here. There's no performances here kind of across the board other than Jack Black that, you know, are standouts like there are in maybe something like Across the Spider-Verse. But like I said, everybody does a solid job. A lot of people were worried about Chris Pratt being Mario. 
solid job. Everybody thought he'd do just a horrible job. He'd butcher it. I can't even picture him being Mario. Well, he did a good job. Maybe it takes a little bit to get used to hearing him and Charlie Day as Mario and Luigi, but I think you get over that real quick, and they both do a really solid job. It took me a little bit to get used to Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, but once I got used to that, I think it fit. I didn't think it fit at first, but the more I heard, the more I got used to it. And Anya Taylor-Joy did a really solid job as Princess Peach. Overall, I did have a good time with the Super Mario Brothers movie. I think we can chalk this up as another win for video game movies, both in terms of quality and in terms of box office success. There's not a ton of substance here to this film, but it's fun. That's okay. Like I said, it's a cotton candy movie. If you're just wanting a movie that's just quick and fun and sugary and pretty to look at with just, just fun, then I think this is a movie for you. I did have a good time, and honestly, I think you will too. I'm only going to give it maybe about a 3 out of 5, but that's a very, very positive and solid 3 out of 5. This may be one of the most positive and solid 3 out of 5s that I've ever given. I would just really love to see what they can do with a sequel and what they can do kind of with the Nintendo movies as a whole going forward. So that's it. That's my review of the Super Mario Brothers movie. What did you think about this film? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did you like it more than I did? Did you not like it? Did some of the negatives take away too much to where you couldn't enjoy it? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We're getting really close to 100 subscribers. That's really exciting. So if you're not subscribed, please, go ahead and do so. That would mean so much to me. But ending the video here, go ahead and like this video, hit subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video. Follow me on social media, anywhere you can think of, at Cinema Seth. And I will see you next time.